Hi, my name is Victoria and I'm a QI Education Fellow at the Centre for Sustainable Healthcare. I'm going to talk to you today about sustainability in quality improvement and why, as a clinical supervisor or tutor, you need to know how to guide your learners and students in how to embed the principles of sustainable healthcare into their QI projects. We're going to cover, firstly, what is sustainable healthcare and how does it relate to my clinical practice? Secondly, what is sustainability in quality improvement? And finally, how do you help to embed sustainability into every QI project that you supervise, regardless of your area of work? First, let's talk about sustainability. Sustainability means meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet those needs. We know that we are in a state of global climate change, with global temperatures on track to exceed the 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius rise, which would trigger unprecedented changes in our climate systems, with what the WHO refers to as catastrophic health consequences. Here you can see the title of a 2009 Lancet and UCL report which identifies climate change as the greatest global threat of our century, threatening to roll back a generation of gains made in public health. But how does this global crisis relate to us as NHS clinicians? Well, firstly, sustainability is about protecting the health service for both current and future generations. But we also need to reflect on whether we are actually undermining health by being unsustainable in the way we deliver care. We've all seen waste in our clinical practice, and maybe we worry about how resource intensive our work is. We also live in a society where healthcare demand continues to increase, and our resources need to match these increasingly complex needs. Healthcare has a big impact on the environment. If the global healthcare system were a country, it would be the fifth largest carbon emitter in the world. The NHS itself is the largest public sector carbon emitter in the UK accounting for 5% of total UK carbon emissions, with emissions attributable to the NHS in England greater than the annual emissions from all aircraft departing from Heathrow Airport. The NHS was the first healthcare system in the world to commit to a net zero carbon plan and has put in place a strategy to reach net zero by 2040. This graph shows how we might reach this. What this shows us is that to reach the net zero target shown here under the horizontal green line is that even if we engage in traditional sustainability activities like improving the energy efficiency of our buildings, we won't be able to get our emissions under that target line without clinical innovation and leadership from people like you and those that you will supervise. So let's talk about what we can do. The Centre for Sustainable Healthcare has been working for over 12 years to build models of sustainable healthcare and we believe that embedding sustainability into quality improvement gives clinicians the tools to get started right now and lead positive change. In fact, it's already happening. Clinicians from across the country have developed and led sustainable quality improvement projects and completed initiatives like the Green Ward Competition and Green Surgery Challenge. This team in Devon made changes to their anaesthetic gases and saved almost 50 tonnes in carbon, the equivalent of 26 return flights from UK to Sydney while this team simply reduced the number of unnecessary cannulations in ED and made financial savings of over £27,000 and carbon savings of 8 tonnes. So, what is sustainable quality improvement and how do we carry out a sustainable quality improvement project? Sustainability and quality improvement, or SUSQI, is an approach to improving healthcare in a holistic way by assessing quality and value through the lens of a triple bottom line. In SUSQI, the health outcomes of a service are measured against its environmental, social and economic costs to determine its sustainable value. SUSQI embeds the CSH principles of sustainable clinical practice. We focus on our overall aim of improving health and reducing carbon, and we get there by reducing healthcare activity and reducing carbon intensity. To achieve this, we focus on prevention, patient empowerment and self-care, lean clinical pathways and low carbon alternatives. Rather than being a replacement for traditional QI, SUSQI is designed to embed sustainability as an accepted domain of quality into current QI theory. You can embed it into any project because really every QI project should be sustainable. 
We're not the only ones convinced about this, and this is why it's important to tell supervisors and tutors like you about the SESQI approach. Your learners need to know about sustainability as part of their curriculum and learning outcomes. The Royal College of Physicians understands sustainability as a domain of quality and recommended the application of SESQI in a 2019 Academy of Medical Royal Colleges report on developing quality improvements into practice. And both the GMC and NMC have included embedding sustainable healthcare into their standards for professional practice. So, let's talk about how to lead and supervise a sustainable QI project. What are some of the tools you might need? The Tusk UI approach has four steps. Let's look at them in turn. Firstly, setting goals. Much like standard QI, this is all about setting specific or smart goals. In SUSQI, the overarching goal of healthcare improvement is to deliver maximum health gain with minimum financial cost and harmful environmental impacts, whilst adding social value at every opportunity. Encourage learners to think about what aspect of healthcare provision they could focus on, a pathway, a procedure or process step. You can think about the background of the problem. Why has it come to your attention? Fix a problem statement, understand the impact of the problem and its extent, and who might benefit from potential changes. Secondly, we study the system. And this is where CSH have provided some specific tools on our SUSQI website for you to use to help your students understand the environmental and social outcomes of their improvement ideas in order to satisfy the triple bottom line. Encourage your learners to draw out a process map. This helps us to work out what the system currently looks like and identify hotspots where we might intervene. For example, this process map shows a patient pathway for a standard outpatient appointment, which includes visiting the hospital and follow-up tests. By using our scanning for resource use table as a guide, you can use your process map to identify these hotspots, which are part of your system where there is maybe an over-reliance or overuse of resources or areas of excessive waste. You might be surprised at where your resource hotspots are. This graph shows that across the NHS, the highest carbon emissions come from pharmaceuticals and medical equipment, with a much smaller proportion from the clinical waste we see on the wards. You can also use our social impacts table to think about what social impacts your system currently has. Is it overly dependent on patients needing to take time off work, or does it have a huge impact on staff wellbeing, adding to their workload and risk of burnout? Our scanning for social determinants table can also help you to understand what are the wider root causes of the problem. Perhaps we can identify these root causes and tackle these as a way of preventing the problem in the first place. This can help us reduce healthcare activity overall, the most impactful way of achieving both sustainable healthcare and improving clinical outcomes. Thirdly, once you have identified a pathway or process to focus on and identified hotspots, you can start to design your improvement idea a driver diagram can help you with this, and by structuring your thoughts using the sustainable healthcare principles, you can make sure your ideas are always working towards improving sustainable value, regardless of where you focus on or what you might have the opportunity or feasibility to do. This driver diagram shows potential change ideas for improving outcomes in an ICU. A lean pathways approach might help us think about rationalising investigations, whereas a low carbon alternatives approach might have us exploring proning as an alternative to more resource intensive interventions. Finally, we need to measure our impact. How do we know the change we have made is an improvement? We need to think about the impact of our change on every aspect of the triple bottom line. Are we overall increasing sustainable value by the change we have made, by increasing health outcomes and reducing negative environmental and social outcomes? This is where you might want to use our measuring impacts resources to work out the carbon savings of, for example, reducing one inpatient admission or one follow-up investigation. This might require a carbon calculation and we have provided lots of resources to do this simply. You can also calculate savings in terms of units of healthcare activity saved and much of these calculations have already been done for you. For example, we know that one inpatient day on a low intensity general medical ward is equivalent to 38 kilograms of CO2 per day. So if you have saved 50 inpatient bed days with your intervention, then times it by 50 and you get carbon savings of 1.9 tonnes. That's the equivalent of two round trips between London and New York. You will also want to look again at your social impacts table to make sure you are not finding any unintended negative social impacts and adding social value at every opportunity.
We know that medical students and trainees are excited about embedding sustainability into quality improvement. Research by CSH collaborators shows a significant increase in motivation to engage in quality improvement and it makes students feel empowered to get involved in making changes to our system. As supervisors, it can be daunting to guide learners in this exciting new approach. And that is why all of our free resources can be found on susqi.org under Education Pack and Do a Project Step-by-Step -step Guide. You are also always welcome to contact us for help, or better yet, come on one of our courses and join an exploding number of clinicians across the country who are joining as SUSQI lead educators in their areas of work and learn more about how you can start to lead positive, sustainable change. Thanks for listening.